Hello, hello, Tim Kanak with Perkins Roofing here. And today we are going to be talking about roofing insurance and not the insurance that you have on your home for your roof, but the insurance that the roofer or roofing companies should be carrying and why that's so important for you as the homeowner or building owner to make sure that your roofer has proper insurance because there are a lot of crazy scam insurances out there. We're going to be sitting down with Tyler Kosis from Furman Insurance. Furman represents a good number of reputable roofing companies as an insurance agent to shop for the roofing companies to make sure that we have proper insurance coverage and that if there is an insurance claim, they assist us with the insurance claim, filing the paperwork, making sure that everybody has the correct paperwork and uh, getting the proper adjusters and uh, insurance attorneys and anyone else that needs to be involved in on the claim. Um, and he also represents not just for li liability insurance, but your roofer should have liability insurance, auto insurance, and workers comp insurance. They're all very important. I'll explain all three briefly. Liability insurance is regarding damages caused by either negligence or just poor work in regards to the roof itself. This can be for residential or for commercial. A lot of condominiums require very high liability insurance, uh, definitely minimum 1 million coverage. I think we have currently 3.5 million uh, liability insurance coverage on our roofing projects. So in the event that there's some sort of claim, it will cover up to 3.5 million in damages. And we, as the roofing company, would just pay the deductible. So that's how the liability insurance works. Auto insurance is very important because what if a roofer runs their vehicle over something in your yard and damages something, or there's an accident near or around your property, uh, an auto accident from the roofer, uh, that can be very important. So it, it does make sense to have, especially if you're a condo, have large property, or uh, you have an HOA that may require the roofer to have auto insurance. So auto insurance is important for the roofer to have. And that's commercial auto too, not the same as uh, residential or, or uh, regular single person's auto insurance. Uh, commercial insurance, it's important for them to have that, not just, hey, uh, this is me, the roofer, and here's my insurance policy. It's like you need a commercial insurance policy uh, for having work vehicles. The other thing too, and not just work vehicles, but trailers, dump trucks, uh, other equipment necessary to facilitate the roof project. And so that's liability insurance, auto insurance. Lastly, we have workers comp insurance, which is very important for homeowners to make sure that the worker, the roofer has uh, the correct workers comp insurance policies. There are a lot of loopholes around workers comp insurance that we'll talk to Tyler about, but workers comp insurance covers uh, in case there's an, uh, in case the roofer gets injured on the job site, then that workers comp will take care of that roofer. Uh, and you want to make sure that your roofer has workers comp insurance because if any of their employees get hurt on the property, you do not want to get sued due to them getting hurt on your property when you're just there trying to get a house done and you hire a roofer. And then they send guys over who are not insured on their workers' comp policy. They get hurt on your house. You can get sued. That's why it's important to make sure that you, as the homeowner, have workers' comp insurance, or you, as the ho the homeowner, hire a roofer who has proper workers and workers' comp insurance. And that's why it's so important as the homeowner to request COIs. COI stands for Certificate of Insurance. You can request COIs from your contractor that you hire, or from what contractors you want to hire, and you can make sure that they are listed on the policies for all of those. Uh, ways around that are workers' comp exemption policy. So if you're the owner of the company, you do not need to have workers' comp as the owner, but that does not cover their employees. I've never seen one man do an entire re-roof by himself. So if you hire someone and they say, oh no, we're covered, we have workers' comp exemption. The only person who's exempt is the owner of the company. All of their workers are not exempt. So that's just one example of one of these loopholes. And we'll get into the rest with Tyler in just a second.
Tyler, how long have you been working with Furman and how long has Furman been insuring roofers? So Tim, I've been working with Furman Insurance since spring of 2016, about six and a half years. Uh, started off with a gentleman named Rob Foote, our agency president. He started our roofing division in 1992 after Hurricane Andrew. Um, recognized that after that hurricane that there was a significant uh, significant void in the, mar in the roofing insurance marketplace uh, and, and it was underserved from a risk management insurance perspective. Not only professionals out there who specialize in just roofing professionals and started our roofing division. Um, so going on about uh, 30 years now, I was firm in insurance serving roofing professionals. Tyler, why is it so important for homeowners and building owners to hire a company with proper liability insurance? Yeah, so Tim, uh, as a homeowner, when you're hiring a roofing professional, you wanna make sure that the assets in your house are protected at all times. And so homeowners policies aren't going to cover you against construction defect for a roof professional that you've hired. I mean, let's face it, we live in South Florida. Pop-up storms uh, can come up at any time. It rains when the sun's out sometimes down here. And so you wanna make sure that any roofing professional that you hire, if something were to go wrong, the event of a tear off, if there was a pop-up storm, we we'll make sure that your assets inside are protected. And so, um, which we'll get into, I think at some point today, talking about some of the holes and exclusions in certain roofing contractors policies. And as a homeowner, you got to make sure that if something were to go wrong, even the best roofers make mistakes. You absolutely cannot engineer out the risk in this trade. Okay. So then Tyler, in regards to uh, roofing insurance for liability reasons, for liability insurance for a roofer, what would the minimum amount uh, of coverage should that roofer have for a regular homeowner to feel comfortable hiring that roofer? And so, Tim, that's a good question. Um, standard general liability policy should never be less than a million dollars per occurrence, um, two million aggregate. Depending on the neighborhood you live in, um, the value of your home, we recommend some of our clients carry umbrellas, um, depending on the type of work you're doing, but at least a million dollars. and. It, it's not also just the limits of insurance, it's what that policy is covering as well. What, Tyler, are some of the loopholes then that you see in liability coverage that is uh, common for roofing professionals? Yeah, um, certainly Tim, this list can go on and on, but anything from open roof wording limitations, we're seeing torch exclusions and policies, height limitations, square footage limitations, uh, prior work exclusions, um, how they're responding to who's an additional insured and who's not, your blanket waiver uh, subrogation wording. And, um, you know, there could be filled with a number of frivolous exclusions. So I, I advise always asking for a list of forms and endorsements, checking with whoever, um, you know, checking with maybe your property insurance agent. Uh, they may be a good resource to be able to go through and dissect the policy and make sure that the roof for you choose and has the proper coverage and event something went wrong. And that's not the most common thing. I mean, out of roofers, what percentage of roofers would you say in South Florida actually have a good roofing insurance policy? Yeah. Um, so I would say that number is increasing, Tim, uh, or, or I should say decreasing. Um, a number of, of true roofing professionals, I would think that the, the prime, the guys you're handling, the guys you're hiring would typically have decent roofing coverage, but there's a number of subcontractors that you're, they're utilizing out there that may not. And, and matter of fact, I would say probably 75% of subs that are hired um, may not have the proper roofing uh, coverage. And that's why I know, Tim, with your company, you have me review any sub that works for you or on your behalf's coverage or else they don't work for you. And so you do a very good job of that and vetting out the subs and, and that's the reason why companies like yours, um, homeowners should feel safe using. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, you and I reviewing, we see some funny policies sometimes. E even when we do our annual, you know, every, every year we have to renew our policies. So you go out and try to find us the best deals. And when we're doing that, you'll come back to me and you'll say, hey, Tim, we're probably looking at this amount of money because we reviewed all these policies. Some of them that are a lower amount don't even cover things like water damage, which if you're a roofing company, what other types of claims are you gonna have besides water damage? Other claims are gonna be very rare yeah. besides, <laughs> besides water damage. <laughs> so like, what are some, other, some of the other funny things like uh, a roofing 
insurance policy with no water damage have we seen? Oh, geez. Um, you know, Tim, it amazes me because a lot of, a lot of claims to also come from come after the fact of construction. So a lot of those being construction defect and completed operations coverage. Believe it or not, in your policy, a good portion of your rate uh, is to cover completed operations. So there's a lot of exclusions, such as water damage that occur during course, course of construction, and that's ongoing operations coverage. But completed operations coverage for construction defect, I mean, stuff arises even for the best roofing contractors every single day. And, and if something were to occur six months, a year, up to 10 years of statute of repose down the line, making sure you have the proper completed operation coverage is very crucial. And so Tim, and even to hit, to hit on our, our point earlier, the other thing for hiring a roof professional, if they are using subcontractors, your policy, like you said, when you review every single year, not only are we reviewing your subs policies to make sure that they have the proper coverage, in the event that something slipped through the cracks, and they did have a claim that was denied, your policy is in place to cover subcontractors. Maybe a little bit of a higher deductible for you, but at least you know that the contents of the, your clients are covered in the event that something were to slip through the cracks on your subs policies. Yours is in place there to cover it as well. Yeah, I mean, we've seen even some guys who contact me and say, hey, I want to come work for you. They've had painter's insurance or... Uh, some guys uh, may have height limitations where they only cover like four stories and below. So that's fine for single family work, but condominiums or anything, uh, even even tall warehouses, that wouldn't cover anything like that. Yeah. And, and even something as simple as, and this is where exclusions get funny, even something as simple as doing work on behalf of an HOA, some townhouse communities, um, or condo communities or whoever it may be, the exterior could be covered by the HOA. It may not be the homeowner who's hiring, or who's hiring a roofing professional. And if they did, and your roofer was contracted on behalf of the HOA, some policies will exclude work, direct, work done directly uh, on behalf of the HOA itself. So, and there's a lot of funny exclusions in there and, and making sure that you pick a roofing professional, that they have an agent that's going through these things with them and, and is aware of this industry in particular uh, obviously you being involved on the insurance side uh you've seen it all more or less if you want to give us a couple examples or horror stories i suppose of uh some poor unfortunate homeowners who didn't hire roofers with the correct coverage yeah tim i'm gonna i'm gonna switch gears from from a general liability instance here for a horror story to to a work comp instance and so uh, one of my clients Actually, was working on a roof, um, and of course, they had their ladder up. Uh, the homeowner themselves actually hired an AC contractor who did not have proper workman's comp coverage. Um, I don't think the homeowner reviewed their work comp policy, and um, without our client's permission, the AC contractor used our roofing contractor client's ladder. Uh, the guy actually fell off the ladder and hurt his ankle. He's right now on his third surgery and um, reserves for that claim are in excess of $500,000. And so, um, in that instance, without work comp and a homeowner giving an AC contract the permission to get up on their roof, uh, another roofing professional or another tradesman's uh, equipment is something that right now, it's going back and forth between three companies, the roofing contractor, the AC contractor who has no insurance and the homeowner. And uh, it's in litigation right now. Uh, we know where liability may end up, but as a homeowner, just always keep this in mind. You can always be brought into a suit um, if the person doesn't have the proper coverage. Even if somebody you hired, that you expect them to be a master of their trade, if they're not covered correctly, typically an attorney is gonna go to where they see the money at. So never safe uh, from being named in a lawsuit. And it's very important that the person you hire is covered all right, Tyler, so talking about different insurances uh, from liability to workers' comp, how about auto insurance? Why does it matter to a homeowner if the roofer has commercial auto or not? Yeah, Tim, and it's a good question. So, I mean, certainly auto for, for a number of our clients is one of the leading uh, causes for severity in claims. And so as a homeowner, um, I know that typically you wouldn't think that wouldn't be anything at high speeds, but 
you got roofing contractors backing up trailers, could it potentially hit your garage, could potentially cause bodily injury to somebody, um, if not watching properly. Um, whether it be anything on your property that that vehicle would, would cause bodily injury or property damage to, you want to make sure that they're covered for liability purposes. Um, and certainly once that auto is parked and anything was, some of the equipment was removed from the trailer, there's other coverages that go into place like the general liability. So it kind of wraps that into it as well. But I mean, no question with any vehicle mistakes happen and, um, vehicles can cause a lot of damage. So making sure we recommend for our clients, no less than a million dollar limits on the auto. Um, I see a number of contractors out there with lower limits and, and certainly we see claims exceed a million dollars. Uh, I'd say every couple months we got one going on. So, um, Tim, it's, it's definitely a very important coverage and, and it's becoming even more important. We already talked Tyler about workers comp a little bit, but what are some of the loopholes that you see in workers comp coverage? that uh, some roofers might have? Uh, good good question, Tim. So typically, I'd like to say this, um, Florida is a very work comp friendly state in general. Uh, with that said, there's different types of policies that mm -hmm. homeowners should be aware of and uh, making sure that it's tough to track as a homeowner as well too because there's employee leasing arrangements out there. Making sure that, so like your work comp policy is a standalone work comp policy. It covers Perkins Roofing as a whole. Anybody working for you on your behalf, uh, that's an employee of your firm, is going to be covered under or like for kind of an, a work comp umbrella for Perkins Roofing Corp. Um, outside of that, there's employee leasing arrangements, which only cover those employees who are on the active roster for that company. So we know um, certainly we work in an industry where some of these guys may not be on the roster. And so it's definitely for a homeowner, um, you want to make sure that if you are hiring somebody that has an employee leasing arrangement, we recommend collecting a certificate of it or, or a list of employees, I guess, along with that certificate of insurance. So taking it even a step further and knowing who those individuals are that are on your roof, because if they're not, and it's an employee leasing arrangement, they do not have work comp coverage. And um, certainly the homeowner could be responsible for an injury if that were the case. Yeah, and then also talking about workers' comp a little bit, as you know, our policy, we have exclusions for drug-free workplace, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these exclusions that we have under our policy, is that something that typically one of these temporary services, would they be tracking things like that, like how we are? Typically not, Tim. Typically not. Now, for this company policy, of course, that would be written in the drug policy, but the work comp carriers themselves are far less likely to be testing because you don't get the same credits with employee leasing. So it's a very good point. All right. So getting down to brass tacks here, Tyler, how can we help homeowners? How can homeowners make sure that their roofer that they are hiring has full coverage and no loopholes and their liability workers comp or auto policies? Yes, yeah, so, Tim, I'll tell you, as a responsible homeowner, where you're hiring and you're paying a lot of money for this asset, right? You've got to want to make sure that this roofing professional that you're hiring is covered correctly. And it could be tough to do. So especially, we so, first we recommend asking for a certificate of insurance. Right? That certificate of insurance is going to show the homeowner the coverage is in place and what their limits are, when the effective dates are, when it may cancel. But I'll tell you what it's not going to do. Tim, is it's not going to show you what the exclusions are within those policies. So we recommend if you have an HOA, uh, if there's a homeowner association or there's, uh, or if you can send it to your personal homeowner's insurance agent, somebody who's versed in this language, or if you are as a homeowner yourself, have somebody review the actual policy itself and know what's in the policy so that you're not um, just taking their word off a certificate of insurance that really doesn't show you anything built in with, with the coverage. So it's very important. And, uh, and again, it's a, it's a very expensive asset that you're putting on. It's worth the extra time to do due diligence to make sure that who you're hiring is protected properly. All right, Tyler, I know you've got things to do, so we'll get you out of here. I got one more question for you. Uh, as a homeowner yourself, what is the best advice for someone who's in this industry on another side of the industry? What is the best advice that you can give to homeowners, building owners, when they're hiring a roofer. Yes, yeah, so Tim, um, look, just like anything else, I'm sure most of the most of anybody who's watching this video or is put, hiring a contractor in general is probably gonna check out the reviews of a company first. Get a feeling for the type of workmanship and quality that they do. Um, 
make sure that you know that they have presentable vehicles that they're showing up on time on a job site even to just get a bit if they're not showing up on time for that they may not be for the job either but so again you know we've been talking a lot about insurance today of course i work in insurance roofing professionals so i may be a little bit more biased in the protection side of this but look a roof is an asset that protects um that protects everything with inside of your house your home so um it's a very important one and so also during construction, making sure that you have a roofing professional that's covered correctly along the insurances. It's very important. It's a big portion. And it also is an indication um, that the company who you're hiring is a legitimate company. Check them out on SunBiz, see how long they've been in business. And just, um, advice is just make sure you're working with a real company, not a fly by night. We know there's been a lot of storm work. There's companies that come in uh, a couple months at a time, open up an LLC, unmarked trucks, uh, close up shop and move on. You want somebody who's going to be around, who you can go back to for warranty issues, who uh, you you know has a reputation that they don't want to let fold, and it's going to be around because that life, the lifespan of your roof. You want to make sure that your roof, the roofing contractor put it on is around during that time. So, just use a reputable contractor who's insured properly. That's my advice. I hope this video was informative as we wrap it up here on this rainy day. And uh, thanks for Tyler for coming on the video and for Furman Insurance for everything they do for us and for all the other uh, great companies out there that they help provide insurance to. And uh, if you want to reach out to Perkins Roofing for anything, for any insurance questions or any roofing questions or in regards to any roofing work, please contact us for Dade, Broward, and Monroe Counties at 305-687-6521 or 305-MIA roof. And then for up north in Palm Beach County, Martin County, St. Lucie County, you can call 561-559-ROOF. That's 7663 if you don't want to look up what roof is. <laughs> and uh, you can also find us online at perkinsroofing.net or find us more for more of our YouTube videos on the Perkins Roofing YouTube channel. Please, if you like this video, subscribe to our channel, like us on all the things, Google and all that good stuff, and check us out. We appreciate it. Till next time.